Good morning everybody. It is fantastic to be with you this morning. We are one church in two locations, C3 Fremantle and C3 Wellard. We're so glad that you have joined us this morning for a great service. And you know, for those people, if you're just uh, tuning in for the first time, you're checking us out, we would love to connect with you and hear from you. And so all you need to do is send an email, call our, our church number, and one of our pastoral staff will be in contact with you and will help you get connected and help you on your journey to being part of our church. We want to give a big shout out to our church churches in West Africa and Sierra Leone, Liberia uh, and their churches in the Philippines. We're just um, praying for you during the week. We're just praying that you're, you're enjoying the provision that God is bringing to all of you with food and everything that you need and, and, and just know that you know you are on our hearts quite a lot during this season. So today we have a fantastic uh, service for you. We've got variety of people just sharing this morning. We have a guest speaker, Lynette Tobin, and she has an, an incredible word in season for you. Uh, she is um, a great friend and, and you know family to us at C3 Fremantle and C3 Wellard, and we support her missions work that she does in India, so stay tuned. We're going to have a great message from her. So we get to go into a time of praise. So wherever you are, wherever you're sitting, I just want you to get to stand up. And as we go into praise, I wanted to read you uh, Psalm 63 verses one to five. And it goes like this. O oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. So wherever you are, stand up, lift your hands up in praise and let's just praise and worship our God together. Christ to rise in your freedom. You are good. We 
When you make a promise, Jesus, you keep it. You are good. So I praise your name as long as I'm breathing. You are good. I'm not a slave to sin, so I'm singing. You are good. Buried the price to rise in your freedom. Because you are good. When you make a promise, Jesus, you keep it. You are good. So I praise your name as long as I'm give up on me. Oh, what joy I found because of your love, because of your love for me. Oh, my God, so good. You never give up. You never give up on me. Oh, what joy I found because of your love, because of your love for me. Hi, just wanted to let you know about our good news about um, our situation financially during this COVID crisis. Yeah. yeah, it's been tricky the last few years since we bought our house. Budget's been quite tight at some times, yeah. but um, we found that during this COVID period that um, God has really actually blessed us financially, yeah. unexpectedly even. Do you want to tell them? Yeah, so... Uh well, work's been steady for both of us, and through different jobs that we have, we've been able to uh, get the JobKeeper supplement. David's work when he's at production company, um, their income obviously was down because they had to sort of stop production of some work. But um, just with the JobKeeper, they were able to keep a salary at a normal level. And I do bits and pieces, and one of the jobs that I do is actually work for a mystery shopping company. And obviously, during COVID 19, for about a couple of months now we've not been able to actually order any shops because they've been closed but um, my boss actually applied for a job keeper for her permanent um, staff and so I've been able to receive that so that's actually been a blessing because there's actually been um, you know a lot more financial um, I guess provision even with uh, uh, you know work being a bit low in some areas also, we've also had, there's been benefits offered for people who have their children in daycare facilities. So our little Isaac has been able to keep going to daycare and there's a benefit that helps to pay for that as well. So, you know, God has been really blessing us and we haven't had to worry or have had to sort of live, um, you know, in a tight, tighter means or anything. We've just been able to keep just living and doing work. And, you know, we're both involved with the media at church. We've been able to go out and about and film you guys and just, you know, share um, people preaching and share the good news of God and be able to do all that and not have to worry at all about any financial provision because God's just kept looking after us and even going above and beyond our needs God has really truly blessed us so you know even though when COVID hit it was strange and stressful and everybody was concerned what was going to happen we didn't know we just decided as a family to just even though we felt uncomfortable we just decided to trust God because we knew that he would look after us look after us, you know, in our health and our well-being and keep us safe, but he'll also look after us, providing for our needs, and he's definitely done that. Mm, that's been really good. See you guys. And how I live for the moments where I'm still in your presence And no noise dies down Lord, speak to me now As you have all my attention And I will linger and listen I can't miss a thing Lord, I know my heart He wants more of you My heart you want something new, so I surrender all. So
desire is to know you deeper. Lord, I will open up again and throw my fears into the wind. I am desperate for a touch of heaven. In your love and affection, it's the sweetest of all. Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new, so I surrender. Open up my 
Hi everyone, it's uh, now time that we come to our tithes and our offerings. And this is a scripture that is in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. And this is what it says here. It says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work so God loves a cheerful giver why give out a reluctancy why give out a compulsion don't ever do that that's not why that's not how we give never but we give out of a heart of generosity um, I don't want to be unhappy when I'm giving. I'm very happy when I'm giving. I love to give out of joy. I love it. Why be sad? My finances are going to a great cause. It's going to, to God to help build his house, to do what he wants to do with it. And so um, be cheerful about giving. It's fine. It's great. Trust God when you're giving and be cheerful about it. Be happy about giving. It makes it easier. It makes it fun. So give cheerfully. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in this morning. And I just pray God's blessing upon your life. I pray that as I speak this word this morning, that I'll encourage you. Not only encourage you, but bring clarity to what God is doing in this day and to what he is speaking to you about. I've been swamped with so many different predictions, and I'm sure you have too. Things are never going to be the same again. We're going to have a new normal. And at the same time, I hear many stories of survival and revival from around the globe. Stories of tragic situations around the world. But you know, I've heard so much kindness that is happening amongst the poor as they reach out to those that are even poorer than them. And for those that have risked their own health, we just pray a blessing upon you this morning. We have other countries with huge death tolls, but you know, there we again hear stories of bravery and courage and joy and hope and survival and revival. Also, like many of you that I'm speaking to this morning, you are being challenged. You are being challenged to be part of revival. And it's time to move out of survival. Yes, survival strategies are necessary at times, but there is a time, people, when we need to turn survival into revival. Also, many of you have probably been like me and wondering what to do with yourself. And you know, I'm sure like me, every one of you have got clean cupboards. But I've come to tell you that I haven't cleaned the shed. And if you thought about our shed, the cockroaches, the spiders, the mice, I actually cleaned out the shed. And I even got David somehow to start sorting out his hundreds of books on his bookshelf. And just this week, after I was asked to preach this morning, you know, he showed me a book that was 175 years of West Australian headlines from all over the world. This book actually goes from 1833 to 2008. And I tell you, I started to read this amazing book. And it's full of challenging stories of world wars, civil wars, earthquakes, tragedies, tsunamis, but also miracles and great victories. It's full of stories of joy and bravery, kindness and hope. Many stories of survival, many stories of love and many stories of encouragement. We forget how much has happened over the centuries worldwide. And I believe history is a good reminder of how God has kept us through these years as a nation and nations of the world. History is a reminder that he never leaves us that he never forsakes us. You know what, people? We can learn lessons from history. So much we can take from these stories and we can praise God for his keeping power and the amazing stories of resilience 
And we can be encouraged this morning to move out of survival mode into revival mode. Because I believe that what God is saying. Yes, survival was fine, had to happen. But it's now people to move into revival. You know what, people? God is still on the throne. Be encouraged. I can only surmise, like others, about what God is doing in this time of shutdown. But really, none of us are really sure. But I can tell you a little of what God has done in the past. And from that, we know what he will do in the future. Because he said it's the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. You know, in the word of God, we will find many stories of lives that for a period in life went into shutdown. These people went into survival mode. But the results of that shutdown were revival. I pray that we will be encouraged to come out of lockdown, move from survival mode, which was necessary, and to move to revival mode. Are you ready, people? Look at Noah and the family. He was locked down on an ark for at least a year. With all those animals, you're worried about home homeschooling your kids? Imagine all those animals. But when Noah emerged onto dry land, he became an incredible man of faith, touching all, all nations, survival to revival. What about Moses? He went from being a prince to a shepherd. He went down in lockdown in a desert for 40 years, people. He came out of lockdown to liberate Israel from Egypt to the promised land, survival to revival. King David was in lockdown for 15 years after he's been told he was going to be the king of Israel. But then he came out of lockdown and he took the throne people to lead the people in a tremendous way. But even bigger than that to me, you know what God said about him? He was a man after his own heart. Oh, that God will say that we are a man and woman after his own heart. And he was author of many psalms. And I tell you, they are an integral part of the word of God. He went from survival to revival. Elijah, he was in lockdown, but he was hiding at the brook Cherith. You know, the ravens came and they fed him morning and night, and he drank from the brook. Further on we read, this man that was hiding at the brook, he stood alone against the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel and the false prophets were destroyed. Then the nation of Israel turned back to God. One man who took a nation from survival to revival. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. This lockdown was very short and I know you'll know why it was so short. They were cast into a furnace of fire because they chose to lock down rather than worship false gods. The three became four when the Son of God entered the furnace with them. And whatever you're going through this morning, if it feels like fire, I'm telling you, Jesus is in that furnace with you this morning. When the king saw this, he called them out. And because of this very short and fiery lockdown, the king decreed that everyone had to bow their kneel to God, knees to God. People repented and turned back to God, survival to revival. Jonah was three days locked down. He was three days locked down in the belly of a whale. Oh, people, what would that be like? And ushered in one of the greatest revivals in history, survival to revival. Esther was a lockdown in the palace. I'm telling you people, she hadn't been the flavour of the month with the king for at least a month. But she came out of lockdown, put her life on the line and saved her people from destruction, survival to revival. Rahab, a prostitute, had a revelation who God was and she was courageous people and she saved the spies and she went down into lockdown waiting for the promised miracle. They had promised they would come back and her family would not be destroyed. And tell you what, she went in down a lockdown and she waited and waited. And I'll tell you what, people, her and her family were incredibly saved and she came in the lineage of Jesus, a prostitute in the lineage of Jesus, survival to revival. Disciples 
They were in lockdown for 10 days after Jesus was crucified. And they waited because they had been promised that the Holy Spirit would come. Then the Holy Spirit came and fell dramatically on them. And because out of that, it formed and fashioned the early church. A church that moved in God's power and thousands were saved. Are you people, are you ready to go from survival to revival and see thousands saved? Paul was in lockdown in prison. And by the time he came out of prison, he had finished writing the epistles. Books we read every day, survival to revival, still going on. Jesus was in lockdown in the tomb for three days. And when he arose from the dead, he brought salvation to the world, salvation to you and me. His whole heart was, and still his people, that none shall perish. None shall perish. Survival to revival, that can be your choice this morning. And as we come out of lockdown, people, I pray that we will allow God to move us from survival to revival. That we will come out with renewed courage, renewed purpose, and most of all, have others on our minds. Like the disciples, when they were told not to preach about Jesus, what did they do? Did they go home and lock themselves in? No, they said, God, God, make us bolder. They didn't come under fear and they kept on spreading the good news. Amen. And thousands were saved. And people, if you're hearing me this morning, hear my heart. God loves you. He is for you. He doesn't want you to stop in the survival mode. He wants you to come into revival mode because he has chosen you to, to be used to make a difference in this day right now. It's not just when it's all over, but right now you can make a difference in someone else's world. I pray that you'll pick up the Bible people and read of how much he loves you and how he can take you from survival to revival. How he can set you free. How he can forgive you of your sins. He can do all that. It's all written here, people. Pick up the Bible. And it's just right now, take a moment. Will you choose to stay in survival? Letting the world's view and fair direct you. What is directing you this morning? Is it what the news is saying? Or is it what God is saying? And he's saying this, that I love you. I died for you. I just want you to accept that. And you'll know that you are free. And you know what, people? God's coming to tell you he has a greater plan and greater purpose. Whatever that lockdown has looked like for you, some of it's been rough, some of it's been hard, especially with so many deaths. But I've come to tell you, he still has a purpose and plan for your life. And I pray that God will turn your survival into revival. If we just close our minds for a moment. Oh God, you see all these people listening right now. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit will move on them wherever they are, wherever they're sitting, wherever they're standing, whatever they're doing. The Holy Spirit will come right now and just touch them. They'll stop for a moment. And say, God, help me to get out of this survival mode because that makes it all about me, what I can do and what I can't do. That's what survival is. People, but they will move out in revival. What does that mean? Moved in the power of God, believing that their sins are forgiven, believing that they are free, believing that you've got a purpose for their life, believing you have a future. That's greater than they would ever have known while they were in lockdown. Oh, Father, I pray that you raise your people up to bring revival. Because it's not just going to happen by a prayer. It's going to happen through us. But first of all, we need to be revived. And if you're there this morning and it's been so hard, I just pray that God will revive your heart. He'll revive your hope. He'll revive Oh, God, just revive you. And you'll just know that God has touched you. And he is with you and for you, I pray. In Jesus' name.
Oh, people, let us be revival people and not survival people. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, that was such an incredible message that we just heard from Pastor Lynette and, and what a timely message of, of you know hearing about how we're moving from survival into revival out of this lockdown period. It was such a great message. And you know, we, we always want to give an opportunity for, for people who who have just heard about Jesus for the first time or who want to renew their relationship and come back to Christ. That, that you have this opportunity to do that right now. In John 3, 16, the word says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And so right now, for those people who, who want to say, Yes, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want you to be Lord of my life. I want to follow you all the days of my life. Or you want to come back to him today, pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died for me, that you rose again on the third day. I thank you that you have forgiven me for all of my sins. And today I ask that you would come into my life, be Lord of my life. I repent of all the things that I have done to have hurt you. And I receive your forgiveness and welcome you into my life and my heart right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So you will see on the screen that there's an email you can call our church. Please do that if you pray that prayer and one of our pastors will be in touch with you and will help you on your journey. Church, we are in such a great season where we are gathering again uh, with our connect groups uh, in person, in our homes. We're still doing our, our connect via Zoom as well. So make sure that you stay connected, that you go to connect, that you uh, connect virtually if that's what your connect group is still doing. And if you're not part of a connect group yet, again, give the church a call and we will get you connected for sure. So have a fantastic week. So look forward to seeing you during the week in different ways and definitely back in church online next Sunday. God bless you all. Bye.